Hi, my name is Chaining B. Santiago. My name is Vinny Salyador. And I'm Resni Antony Guinness. We are from BSHM Wandashwan. We came from Cavite State University. Our course code and course title is Chinen Online Arts Appreciation. And our instructor is Jan Riel Murilagian. We want to introduce you to the history of instrumental arts. Instrumental music is a musical composition that is without lyrics or singing although it might include some inarticulate words. The music is however produced by musical instruments. If you think the history of instrumental arts is boring, then you still might not realize that how it greatly affects you for our present. In here, the more we study the history, the more we enhance our life. If you want to have a better society, we must consider the things in history. So join us as we take an amazing trip back in time and look closely at our history of instrumental arts. Today, we're looking for the history of music of the medieval period. One dominant musical style in this period was the Gregorian chant. He developed a form of plain chant in the 9th and 10th century, and it is after the name of Pope St. Gregory the Great. The music was usually monophonic, meaning single note at a time. In this period, music appears to have been constructed and heard as separate lines rather than vertical lines. The monophonic texture was predominantly used during the first part of this era, and polyphonic texture began to use in the mid to late medieval period. Popular genres during this period include sacred vocal music such as plain chant, masses, and matat, and secular vocal songs. Now, we want all of you to please listen to the music carefully. During this period, music was primarily vocal and instruments were used to accompany vocal lines or to improvise instrumental dances. For me, it is religious music. Melodic intervals and sacred melodies were often based on church modes. The harmony and tonality were not functional in this period. Now that we finished the medieval history, let's go to our next history. But before going to our next history, is everyone enjoying having a trip back in time to our history? Good to hear that. Now, let's look forward. Renaissance music. Renaissance music is vocal and instrumental music written and performed in Europe during the Renaissance era. In the Renaissance, music became a vehicle for a personal expression. The Renaissance period is a period of looking back to the golden age of Greece and Rome. Renaissance music became popular as entertainment and for amateurs and educated. Renaissance music are mostly polyphonic. It has a multiple independent layer of harmony happening at the same time to make beautiful music. I also have an example of Renaissance music. <laughs> Think of the Renaissance music. This music was usually performed by vocal groups and the instruments that they used with voices, they performed it with the same lines. The voices were blended by having musical lines present the same musical phrase, one after another. Great! Now that we've finished discussing the history of Renaissance music, 
Let's go to our next history, the Baroque music. The word Baroque derives from Portuguese word Baroco, which means pearl of irregular shape, that was used in fine jewelry and considered pejorative when it was first used in the early 18th century. During the Baroque period, the art highlighted grandiose and collaborative ornamentation. New instrumental techniques and changes in musical notation were developed. Major and minor tonality was also created in this period. Baroque music is not easy to remember because melodies are very continuing or there is no stopping point, especially in instrumental music. Baroque music expanded the size, range, and complexity of instrumental performance and also established musical genres like operas. Did you ever play or heard a pipe organ? <laughs> instruments were invented during the Baroque period. So, if you hear either of those instruments, it is probably from Baroque. Now, let's watch this example of Baroque music. <laughs> observed in this Baroque music. Their expressive tools such as dynamics were generally either loud or soft. This music often polyphonic and the rhythm of the music is energetic. Renaissance music were both prominent and ensembles such as chamber orchestra and woodwind and brass are used for solo effects. Awesome! Since everyone knows medieval, renaissance, and baroque music, there's still more to learn. We still have three remaining histories of music, and we will all find out because all of us are curious, right? Great! Now, let's go to our next history, the classical music. The word classic tends to mean an art which is so good that it will always be enjoyed by future generations. It is something that has become a model for the future artist. Classical music is a very general term which normally refers to the standard of music of countries in the Western world. It is music that has been composed by musicians who are trained in the art of writing music or composing and written down in music notation so that the other musicians can play it. Classical music may also be described as art music. Though it was not good in classical period, that term also includes type of serious modern music which are not classical. Classical music differs from pop music because it is not made just in order to be popular for time or just to be a commercial success. It is different from folk music which is generally made up by ordinary members of society. 
and learned by future generations by listening, dancing, and copying. Classical music tends to mean music that will not be forgotten soon after it is written, but is likely to be enjoyed by many future generations. Classical music can be for instruments or the voice. The symphony orchestra is the most common group of instruments for the playing of classical music. It has four families of instruments. The string instruments, which include violins, violas, cellos, and piano. The woodwind instruments, which include flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons. Together with related instruments of different sizes, the brass instruments, trumpet, trombone, tuba, and French horn, and percussion instruments which nearly always include timpani, as well as many other possible instruments which are hit or shaken. This is very different from a typical rock band which has a drummer, a guitarist, one or two singers, and electric bass and keyboard. Instruments that play classical music are not normally amplified electronically. The same applies to the voice. Singers may be sopranos, altos, tenors, or basses, depending on their vocal range. Their voices are not amplified. Opera singers in particular have to develop very powerful voices which will be heard over the orchestra and project right to the back of an opera house. The instruments used in classical music developed at different times. Some of the earliest were known in medieval music. The trombone and the triangle have hardly changed for hundreds of years, but the violin family developed from folk instruments such as fiddles and gradually replaced to viols to form the basis of the modern orchestra. This was happening by the beginning of the 17th century, which was the time when opera was invented. Classical music has come a long way. The countless composers have contributed to making it what it is today. Perhaps. What we have learned more than anything is that classical music is one thing, timeless. We still look back to the beginning from time to time and remember the beautiful music so many people made. We're thankful for their hard work, for the wonder they gave us, and the gift of classical music that always keeps giving. Great, now let's move on to the romantic music. Romantic music is a term denoting an era of Western classical music that began in the late 18th or early 19th century. It was related to Romanticism, the European artistic and literary movement that arose in the second half of the 18th century, and Romantic music in particular dominated the Romantic movement in Germany. The work of many men and women during the Romantic era was paramount to conceptualizing art as a way of expressing emotion rather than just expressing the physical world. By learning about the Romantic compositions, you'll add skills to your repertoire that will increase your ability to create unique, poignant music. Romantic music moved toward the spiritual and subjective experiences of each person's life. Some criticized the movement for lacking any central meaning because it dealt with varied ideas such as connecting with nature, supernatural occurrences, and the infinite, but it undoubtedly created musical pieces which intense emotional appeal. Romantic pieces frequently use in complex rhythm and changes in time signature. Even different works by the same composer would utilize distinctly different techniques. Additionally, as the skill of musicians increased, the tempo of the music dramatically increased. While romantic composers experimented in many ways, one old norm they kept was the form of their music. The most common works were operas, concertos, and symphonies, though there were new forms introduced as well. These were generally smaller pieces, such as nocturnes and waltzes. As the Romantic movement stressed subject expressions of emotions, it did this mainly through melodies. Pieces often featured extremely lengthy ornamented runs to display the technical talent of musicians and took advantage of changing sound dynamics that increased the emotional appeal of the music. As the music became more subjective, the size and instrumentation of the orchestra grew. The tones of the orchestra became much more varied, particularly by adding more to the woodwind and brass sections. 
special music effects were also added to create unique pieces and profiles for each composers. The Romantic era was one of the first times in the history that art made a serious divergence from the popular trends of society rather than following them. Not only did it encourage individualism and a serious connection with the spiritual, but it also began to offer major opportunities for the female composers, another important first. For these reasons, it's easy to see why a good knowledge and appreciation for romantic music persists to this day. Awesome! Now that we finish discussing the romantic music, let's move to our last history which is the modern music. Modernism is an aesthetic stance underlying the period of change and development in the musical language that occurred around the turn of the 20th century. A period of diverse reaction in challenging and reinterpreting older categories of music. Innovations that lead to new ways of organizing and approaching harmonic, melodic, sonic, and rhythmic aspects of music and changes in aesthetic worldviews in close relation to the largest identifiable period of modernism in the arts of the time. The most important thing that was expressed about the definition of modern music is that the degree of modernism depends on the experience and taste of those who are listening. This means that each person can have vastly different views on which musicians and what styles are considered modern because the critic of all arts is merely opinion. The definition of modern in a dictionary is anything within the present. When discussing music, the essay emphasized that modern music has other qualities than means alone. To be considered modern music needs to alter in a varying degree from the traditions in material and in the style it departs from the previous conventions. Music evolves just as language does. In the context of music, the grammar used in modern music is its harmony, melody, and rhythm that break all the rules. Without music, life wouldn't be this fun and colorful. Music can change the world. Music rhythm find their way into the secret place of the soul. So that's all the six instrumental art history. We discussed from medieval music to modern music. We hope that you have learned something from this talk. God bless you all.